Then the Buddha went on in the second noble truth to give us the cause of suffering. The cause of suffering is what he calls thirst or craving. The word is tanha. The tanha comes in three kinds. The first is the craving, the thirst for sense pleasures. Each of our senses wishes to experience pleasure. We want to see pleasant things. We don't want to see ugly things. We want to smell pleasant smells. We don't want to smell bad smells. So the senses are always in search of pleasurable sensations. And we go on and on and on seeking out more and more and more pleasant sensations. But no matter how many pleasant sensations we manage to find, they're not permanent. This process, the Buddha said, it's like pouring water into the ocean. The ocean is never going to say, enough, I'm satisfied. Similarly, the senses. Okay, you can perhaps satisfy one sense that you've, you've eaten enough food and you think, oh, couldn't eat another thing. And then someone says, oh, but would you like a cup of coffee? Oh, yes, thank you very much. Would you like somewhere nice, comfortable to sit down now? Oh, yes, please. This is going on and on and on and on. So this is one form of craving, craving for sense pleasures. It's also the desire not just for, uh, for material things. The mind is also considered a sense. So we want to think pleasant or happy thoughts. We want to experience pleasant things in the mind, like fame, power, love. The second form of craving is called bhava tanha. Bhava means to become or to continue. We have a craving or a desire for our life to continue. If you were told that you won't be going home tonight because your life is going to come to a halt, I guess you probably would not be happy. You have to keep your brain to be able to survive long enough to go home. That's one form of bhava, to continue. It's also the craving or the desire to achieve or to change oneself and hopefully after death to continue on to another state. Uh, in some religions they have talk about the state of heaven. And so the desire that I shall die and go to heaven. There's also the desire to continue in the sense of reproduction. This is what drives forward the whole of the natural world. Each species wishes to continue, to continue its genes by starting a new generation. That is Baba. And the third form of uh, uh, craving is the Baba Tanha, the craving not to go on, not to continue. That can lead, unfortunately, to people deciding that they wish to terminate their life because they are very unhappy. It also gives rise to the materialistic viewpoint that after death, I hope I don't go on. I hope nothing survives. Just material elements decay and that's the end. No more going on. The eternalist view is, yes, I want to continue in Baba Tanha. I want to go on to some further state. But the opposite is the Baba Tanha. The hope that 
Nothing goes on. Nothing continues. So we can summarize these first two truths by saying that Dukkha is a universal experience and it is caused by our desire to attain and to hold on to things which we think will be a source of happiness. Some of you may know the analogy of the monkey trap. You know the monkey trap? If you wish to catch a monkey, make a little box with slats inside. You put a banana inside and you secure the box by tying it to something steady like a tree. And a monkey comes along and he puts his hand through the gap between two of the slats and he grasps the banana. Now he has a problem because his fist is now too big to go through the gap between the slats. So he's held there, stuck. To get away, all he has to do is release his attachment, take his hand out. But he doesn't do that. In the same way, we are held to this world of dukkha by our attachments. This is, we make, a, we are responsible. We're, we are trapping our own hand here. 